I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. 2020 Lincoln Aviator. Send it. That's got a lot of torque. It's got the right amount of power. This is actually really good. Horsepower and torque. 400 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque from a three liter twin turbo V6. So the Aviator is the new three-row SUV from Lincoln. Yes, it is. And obviously I have the Aviator shades, which I will take off now. And we also recently drove the Cadillac XT6, which is pretty much direct competition for this. Yeah, so we'll be making a lot of comparisons to that. So since it's brand new, I say we start with the looks. Yeah, this thing looks stunning. I absolutely love how this looks. We've got the new style Lincoln front end and it looks very nice. The front end is my overall favorite part of the looks of this car. What I like about the grill is we've got like those two flatter parts at the bottom and it kind of looks like nostrils on it. Yeah, I can see that. And then the headlights are pretty cool too. Yeah, they're not like super special, but they work. Yeah, it's like the Navigator except only one LED daytime running light, which is easier for me to look at because apparently I have astigmatism. Yeah, apparently. And, <laughs> and lights just like double up on me. But these actually have like super crazy LED lights. We haven't got a chance to use them at night, but apparently they're pretty crazy. They've got like a lot of little LEDs in them. And apparently they turn with the road, but it's sensed by the camera, not by the steering wheel. But what I don't like about the front end, it's a little too flat and squishy when you look at it from the side. And if we move around to the side, just the aviator badge is the coolest thing ever. I love the script and the way it looks. Yeah, that's a solid badge placement for the future of Lincoln vehicles. And if we look at the overall side profile, it actually slopes down at the back, which they told us the whole thing is supposed to look like an airplane wing. Yeah, because aviator, which yeah. like, it, it kind of makes sense a I little bit. I get it, it's a bit of a stretch, but I get but it. it. It looks good from certain angles. It looks like really nice, how it's like black all the way to the very end, which reminds me of a Ford Flex. Yeah, I could see that a little bit. What I really like is that the mirror caps are matched to that. So if you look at it from the right angle, the black on the mirror cap blends into the black line of the windows. And we've got really nice wheels. They are directional. So they're the exact same wheel placed on every corner. So on the left half of the vehicle, they actually look different than the right half of the vehicle. So I think that was something that they could have done better. Oh, and also the wheels are directional because they're supposed to give a sense of movement because they're supposed to look like a jet turbine type thing. Again, I, I get it. Yeah, it's I mean, they funny. are called turbine wheels. They are, yeah. And what is the Continental recommended tire for the Lincoln Aviator? It's actually the Cross Contact LX Sport. However, winter is coming. So we just want to remind you guys to get your winter tires on as soon as possible because you don't want to be that person who gets stuck in the snow and causes traffic on the first snowstorm. Yeah. That's literally Don't do that. my biggest nightmare is to be that person. And the Continental winter recommended tire is the Winter Contact TS850P. So now let's move on to the back end. I don't like the back end. I think it looks all right, but it doesn't stand out like everything else does in the rest of the Lincoln lineup. Yeah, it has the full LED across the back, which is probably the coolest part, but that's kind of it. And it doesn't like light up all the way across. It's not super solid. It's just okay. And can I get to the worst part of this entire vehicle? I would love for you to get into it. So I noticed something odd with the exhaust tips when I was watching one drive in front of me. Turns out that they have real exhaust tips but they actually direct them down inside of the tip. So it was a cold day and while the car was driving, the steam or whatever was coming out from below instead of from the exhaust tips. Yeah, so apparently luxury car buyers hate cleaning their exhaust tips. So every luxury manufacturer is deleting exhaust because apparently the owners just hate cleaning their exhaust tips that much. I don't know anyone who would fill that out on like a customer complaint form. Yeah, like <laughs> what is wrong with you people? You people doing these surveys and stuff? Like <laughs> stop doing that. <laughs> so this is officially 2025 real. Yeah, this is like the future The real. future of bad exhaust tips came early. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this, is, this is just brutal. So, and it's not even really Lincoln's fault. Like kind of is, kind of isn't. And we know a lot of you guys are watching the channel without subscribing. So if you watch a bunch of videos, Videos, just hit that subscribe button. It helps us out and we get to do more cool stuff. Okay, so overall looks wise, this compared to the X-T6. This takes the cake for sure. However, I think the X-T6 looks sportier in the front, but this looks more luxurious. I like the X-T6 front end more, but everything else, I gotta go aviator. Yeah, exactly. Except for the exhaust tips. Yeah, well, the exhaust tips. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess we should move into the next most important part of this vehicle, which would be the interior. Yes, it is. Actually, it is beautiful in here. This feels so much more luxurious just looking at it than the Cadillac did. There's tons of gloss black, which is disgusting, but looks premium. Yeah, and the way the materials are all wrapped around, how this part right here is disconnected, our shift buttons are fancy. Everything about this, 
doesn't look like a Ford to me. That's right. So all the touch points are all high quality. Like there's a little bit of cheapness at the bottom, which you're not really gonna touch except maybe kick it with your feet. But other than that, everything up here is really nice. So interior wise, I think we should dig into the seats first. Yeah, okay. We got a little bit of a gripe with these seats. What, what are they called? They are called perfect position and they have 30 ways of adjustment. So you've got like so many controls on the door here. You've got like a double button in the middle, which adjusts so much more. And then once you press the seat adjustment, you can also adjust them in the infotainment even more. And they have massage seats, which the X-T6 did not. Yeah, and that was a big miss on the X-T6's part. So can you actually get perfectly comfortable in this seat? I think maybe after a very long time, yes, but us driving this for a short amount of time, it's really difficult, especially when we're switching drivers back and forth. This side does not have memory seats, and I think for the first time, the passenger side needs to have memory seats. Or at least a reset button to like deflate absolutely everything, because not everyone knows how to get into all the settings. Like You need to double click this button, there's so many things to adjust. You can't get in and get comfortable easily. Exactly. But the seats look super cool as well, like the way all the little panels move against the backing. Yeah, and they're also heated and cooled as well, so that's nice. But overall, would you take these seats or would you rather like those Cadillac seats? I would rather the Cadillac seats. I like, just want these, this, is just, this is just too much. Bring back couch seats. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a middle row of seats as well that are captain's chairs, and then we've got a little screen for like your temperature and all that stuff down here. Yeah, it's pretty fancy. And then in the third row, there's actually like just enough room, kind of. I guess it's similar to everything else that's three row. Yeah, pretty much. But for uh, comedic and real purposes, here's the both of us in the back. And as a reminder, I am six foot one and a half and Yuri is five foot eight and a half. And we even have peasant blockers in the back, which the XT6 did not. Yeah, exactly. Like this thing got a lot of things right. All right, so now I guess it's your turn to get behind the wheel, talk about the rest of the interior stuff and I guess the driving stuff too. Let's do it. Mm, okay. You comfortable? Not yet, so I need to pull these leg things in, which I already know because I'm an automotive journalist and I'm used to this stuff. Pull this back, adjust this, headrest good, and then double click and make sure that nothing is inflated. I've already saved my preset, so I'm actually good right now. I'm good because I know the drill. And by the way, when we switch drivers, the door handles are also really fancy. Okay, so you don't actually pull on the door handle, you just click the button and pull back. Yeah, so the door handle itself doesn't move. Let's get driving. And let me just put this into Excite and send it. That's got a lot of torque. It's like two steps above dad power. Yeah, pretty much two steps and definitely not one. This is good. So we'll continue with the interior later, but first power. This engine is a peach of an engine. I honestly straight up love this engine. It feels so good. How does using the paddles feel? Terrible, for two reasons. The paddles themselves are plastic, so they feel pretty cheap. The second reason being the actual transmission. So it's a 10 speed and it shifts really slowly. I honestly wish they would have just deleted the paddles and then I wouldn't have any issue with any of that stuff. But they need to have paddles so that if you need to go into a low gear for like getting stuck or towing, you know, there's no room for paddles or like one, two, three right here or <laughs> yeah, shifter. I guess so. But other than that, the transmission does shift quickly, does shift pretty smoothly. So I've got no issues with the drivetrain. This is all wheel drive. So when you do change the drive modes, which by the way, the drive modes are really fancy. They all have crazy names. And the craziest animations too, which I think is absolutely fantastic. This does change the bias of the all-wheel drive system and this is primarily a rear wheel drive so you can actually see your torque split in the gauges so it's pretty cool and this does handle quite well. So we are in Quebec, we are at the launch so let's send it into Quebec cliche corner. There's a bunch of body roll which is exactly what I'd expect but the actual ride quality itself is amazing. Oh, this thing's super smooth. So this one does have air suspension and it is amazing. Like I straight up love this air suspension. This drives so great. It's on par with like the Mercedes GLE and maybe even the BMW X7. So we've got a camera that scans the road for bumps, kind of like the GLE did. Yeah, so it's a system that detects bumps in the road and can kind of anticipate things. So then it just kind of smooths everything out. But the overall thing is it's just very, very comfy. Yeah, and then it also has cool features like when you walk up to the car, it'll actually lower when you get in. And or then, if you unlock it. Yeah. And it lowers like five centimeters. Yeah, so it's really convenient to get in and out. And it looks gangster. The most important part is it looking gangster and the mirror is also <laughs> folding in as well. More cool driving features, the adaptive cruise. Yeah, so that's also tied into the camera system. So this does have their new adaptive cruise lane keep assist system and it actually works really well. Well, we really love that in the Nautilus and the Ford Edge. And this is the next step above, I think. Yeah, and what this has that's cool is you put it into intelligent mode, you can add a tolerance. So say, you know, you're kind of allowed to go 15 over, 
you can set that into it. So if it's 100, it'll keep you at 115. Yeah, so if you go through like a construction zone or whatever, it'll actually lower that, but keep the tolerance, which yeah, is pretty cool. Because it can read the street signs and drop your speed down. So if you go from 100 to a 60, it'll keep you at 115 and then 75. That's right. And the lane keep assist system itself actually works really well. It keeps you in the lanes, it bounces like a little bit, but I think it's just a step below Genesis, but quite close. And what's cool now is that we kind of have the safety halo feature from BMW placed right in the middle here. Yeah, so the buttons are actually pretty accessible to be able to turn all that stuff off. And right there, we also have our camera button. I'd like to mention this has an amazing 360 reverse camera and everything. It does actually, like it's, really it's, high res. Yeah, they also entered the luxury game. With yeah, this and car. I think beat Cadillac in that part too. So overall, I do like this drivetrain. However, if you want more power, they are actually offering a plug-in hybrid for the first time with tons of power. What's the numbers? 494 horsepower. Are you ready for this? Yeah. 630 pound-feet of torque. <laughs> So in case you wanted more power, baby. More power, baby. More power, baby. More power, baby. But we don't have any details on like how far it'll drive on just electric or anything. So I guess we'll have to find out later. So now let's finish with this interior. Can I start with the infotainment screen? Absolutely. So it's not widescreen, but it is big and like tablety style right in the middle, but it's wrapped around nicely by the leather, which I don't mind at all. Do you hate it at all? No, I hate nothing about it. I don't either. And we've got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. My Apple CarPlay is so high res, like it is insane. Yeah, my Android Auto the same, I love this. And then the infotainment's pretty easy to use. You've got like your rewinding satellite radio stations, finally. Yeah, there you go. So we have smart favorites. We don't have Tune Mix yet, but he said it's coming. One thing I don't like about this infotainment is that there's no physical home button. So if I'm in my Apple CarPlay on Maps, I need to click once to go to the home screen, then click the Lincoln button, and then I'm back to the home. I agree, it would be a simple solution to just add a physical home button. But we do have physical buttons for our volume knob, tuning knob, seek, that's really nice. And then we got that for all our climate as well. Yeah, and the volume and tuning are nice knurled knobs. Everything feels very premium. Yeah, the park rear neutral drive is really premium as well. And then we've got wood pattern as well. And it doesn't look cheap. And I don't know if it's fake or not. And I'm sure they're <laughs> gonna tell me it's real. But it's gotta be real. I I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't trust anyone anymore. <laughs> And then our armrest area is pretty good. We got a ton of room in here. It's very comfortable. You can have both of your hands on the steering wheel with your elbows rested. Yeah, I love it. It's actually super comfortable. The driving position itself, you're pretty high, but you're not on top of it like an Edge ST. And then we've got a nice cubby for your phone. I can test the cup holders with this boxed water, which fits just fine. And we also have a wireless charger inside here. We should probably check the visors. We probably should. Three, two, one. Yes, of course. I have no doubt in Lincoln visors after that auto show little sticker Full we pass. saw. Oh, and back to the stereo system. It's actually super good and very crystal clear. Yeah, yeah, I blasted my wrap, zero distortion. And so the main gauges in front of me, they actually look so cool, but I think they're less customizable than the Navigator was. Yeah, I feel like I can't customize anything except for maybe changing the features in the middle. Yeah, exactly. The only thing you can do is change stuff in the middle, which is a little bit laggy, and I don't really like that part of it. But other than that, I think the gauges look really cool. Yeah, I have noticed some lag, especially when you start the car up, the cool aviator graphic in the infotainment does lag sometimes too, which is like, Come on, this Come is a on. brand new car. Add some more megabytes or yeah. RAMs. <laughs> so you can change some settings in there, like your head-up display. So the head-up display is actually huge and it's crystal clear, so I've actually been enjoying using that for once. <laughs> I oh. really enjoy head-up displays and this one's really good. It's very good. And now to the steering wheel. Yeah, they gimmicked this thing right out. Okay, so it's a little bit much. There's a lot going on. It does look simple at first, but it's kind of confusing to use. So there are some buttons that you actually click and there are a couple little joysticks as well. So the buttons above, below, and the side of the joysticks, I kind of feel like I need to press them sometimes. Yeah, that's what we accident. did a lot at the beginning. Yeah, exactly. So but they don't actually do anything. You just angle towards that and then some of them change when you do different settings. Yeah, so if you go into your cruise control mode, there's more buttons that light up below so that you're less distracted most of the time. I think it's a really cool feature, probably better than the way Land Rover does it. Yeah, and then for some reason they added the voice control button to the top left of the steering wheel where your thumb is. Yeah, they're like, it'll be easier for you to reach and like it's a, that button's never hard for me to reach anyways and I'm also never gonna use it because I don't want to talk to my car. That that's exactly it. <laughs> but, uh, you know, cool attempt. Yeah, pretty much. And since we're out of town, we don't have our boxes with us, but here's a clip of the back. There's a ton of room, everything folds flat. We can control the very back row with buttons. And when the back row is all the way up, there's actually more room than the Cadillac XT6. So we could fit our carry-on luggage way easier. Yeah, so overall, I think I like this more than the Cadillac XT6. So I think that's pretty much it with the Lincoln Aviator. There's actually one thing that I forgot to talk about until this moment. 
there is a keypad on the door and I absolutely love it. I just wanna say that the keypad on the door is the most underrated feature on a car ever. Because you like to use it when you go jet skiing. Yeah, so I didn't care about that feature until I got my jet ski. And on my Raptor, I also have those buttons. So basically you use those buttons to lock and unlock the car if you don't have the keys on you. So you can lock the keys in the car and then unlock it and lock it from the outside. And it's amazing because then you don't have to bring your keys with you. You know my grandma key had that? Yeah, that's a, that's a thing from the past which they still have and I love it. But it was broken. Oh, well, that kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, this one works, my Raptor one works. I love that feature. And this one also has a crazy feature which a lot of new cars are also getting that you can control it with your phone as well. Yeah, and then like you can also sync your seat settings to your key or something so you have multiple key fobs yeah exactly which is probably pretty necessary for these seats yeah so that's pretty much it so let's get into the price starts at sixty nine thousand dollars canadian and this particular one is sitting at eighty four thousand six hundred dollars so that's more than the cadillac yes it is but a lot less than the gle that's right and i think you actually get more value in this than the cadillac so that extra 10 grand or whatever it is because this does have the air suspension i think you actually see that value in this well, i see like pretty much everything in here is nicer than the cadillac like this infotainment screen the reverse cameras this has automatic parking i know and we really like that cadillac and we're like yeah cadillac finally caught up and then guess what lincoln comes out with yeah. this like <laughs> oh cadillac what are you guys thinking so let us know in the comments below, would you take the Lincoln Aviator or would you take the Cadillac XT6? Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Patreon.com slash the straight pipes, Teespring for cool shirts, and don't forget to put on your winter tires as soon as you can. You can't buy this one there, but shout out Speed Academy. <laughs>